Hi, my name is Mr. Leon Sultan, and I'm an AP Human Geography teacher at Abraham Lincoln High School in San Francisco, California. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Sultan Geography. This lecture is about the spatial patterns of agriculture. Let's get started. In this lecture, we're going to discuss what type of agriculture is practiced where. The first type of agriculture we're going to talk about is shifting cultivation, also known as slash and burn. This is practiced in the tropics. It is a subsistence form of agriculture, and it is takes up a lot of land. Now, additionally, nomadic and semi-nomadic herd, herding is a type of agriculture that is done at the subsistence level, but this is done in arid regions such as the Sahara, Central Asia, Mongolia, etc. Both of these types of agriculture are called extensive agriculture. Extensive agriculture consists of any agricultural economy in which the crops and or animals are used nearly exclusively for local or family consumption, subsistence, on large areas of land with minimal labor input per acre. In other words, lots of land and a little output. In contrast, intensive agriculture is a kind of agriculture where a lot of money and labor are used to increase the yield that can be obtained per area of land. The use of large amounts of pesticides and fertilizer for crops, medications, and hormones for animals is also common. In other words, lots of input and lots of output. Now when we look at these two types and we look at agricultural activities, we can classify different activities into different types. So for example, chicken farming in the United States is a type of intensive agriculture, heavy output per amount of land used. So is strawberry farming. This is here in Watsonville, California, and we can see the high level of labor. On contrast, sheep grazing in a field is a form of extensive agriculture because of the large amount of land and little labor input. Additionally, slash and burn agriculture, practiced as a subsistence form in the tropics, is extensive. So, this picture of an American cattle feedlot, is this an example of intensive or extensive agriculture. That's right, this is intensive agriculture. The next type of agriculture that we're going to discuss is called Mediterranean agriculture. This high value agriculture is practiced in California, Chile, South America, around the Mediterranean, as well as Australia. The reason it's so important is because of wine grapes and olives, two extremely high value crops that can only grow in the Mediterranean climate, like we have here in California. Additionally, we have other intensive crops, and much of what we produce is to be sold outside of our state. So if we look at California agriculture, we can see that we are a large producer of dairy, almonds, grapes, cattle and calves, lettuce, strawberries, tomatoes, flowers, as well as walnuts and hay, among other things. What don't we grow in California? Looking at the rest of the United States, we can see that here in the Great Plains, livestock ranching is the most common type of land use. Here in the Midwest, we can see that it's mixed livestock and crop farming. Down here in the South and Florida, truck farming, including growing things like tomatoes, lettuce, melons, beets, etc., as well as other forms of fruit. And finally, up here in the Northeast, we have dairying. The next type of agriculture that we're going to discuss is plantation agriculture. This is a form of intensive agriculture that produces crops usually to be sold outside of the country, always produces cash crops, often luxury crops, and is often established through colonialism and imperialism. Some examples of planta plantation crops are coffee, tea, chocolate, bananas, cotton, tobacco, and sugar, all of which are cas classified as luxury crops. This is not the type of thing that we need to eat. This map shows the spatial extent of coffee production. We can see coffee production really is along the tropics in semi-periphery and peripheral countries. So the coffee demand is created in the core or most developed countries, but the production all happens in the periphery or semi-periphery LDCs. As demand in the core increases, so does supply in the periphery and semi-periphery. More land and resources are then dedicated to the production in order to increase supply. The problem with this is, with plantation agriculture, luxury crops, and cash crops, this leads to starvation. Why? The most productive and fertile lands 
and resources and labor are all dedicated to producing these export crops, not to growing food for the local population, which leads to shortages of food, especially for those in poverty. Now we're going to switch our focus to Asia, and we can see for South Asia as well as Southeast Asia, the most extensive types of land use here are intensive subsistence farming as uh, rice and wheat and other crops. This is a picture of subsistence rice farming in Asia. This is called intensive agriculture because there's a heavy labor input as well as green revolution input of fertilizer, hybrid seeds, pesticides, etc. This is an example of a picture of subsistence wheat farming also on the Indian subcontinent and we can see here a heavy labor input as well as a green revolution input of fertilizer, hybrid seeds, and pesticides. So despite the fact that this is subsistence, there's still a heavy input. In contrasting core versus peripheral agriculture, we can see on the left, core agriculture is heavily mechanized, with only a low percentage of the total workforce being involved in agriculture. It is done for sale and to make profit, and done at a large scale with a heavy use of green revolution inputs, such as pesticides and fertilizer. In contrast, peripheral agriculture is done by hand, with a high percentage of the workforce involved. It is done for home consumption, known as subsistence. It is done at a smaller scale, with only some use of green revolution inputs. Switching gears, we're going to look at land survey systems here in the United States. Now, a cadastral system is just another name for a land survey system, and the one that we use here is called the township and range. Within the township and range, we have further divisions into the Federal Rectangular Grid, Long Lot Survey, and Meets and Bounds. The Federal Rectangular Grid is the most common, and we can see this all throughout the western states. This is what it looks like when you fly over. Down in the south, along the Mississippi River, we can see the Long Lot Survey. And finally, on parts of the east coast and the west coast where we have some topography, we see the Meets and Bounds. These are the three most important types of survey systems to know for the AP exam. Thank you. I hope you found this lecture useful. Again, this was Spatial Patterns of Agriculture. My name is Mr. Sultan. I teach at Abraham Lincoln High School in San Francisco, California. The YouTube channel is Sultan Geography. Don't forget to like and subscribe.